Hi, my name is Tao. I'm from National Taiwan University and under the supervision of Professor Lin Shan Li and Professor Hong Yi Li. I'm here to introduce our work towards unsupervised speech recognition and synthesis with quantized speech representation learning. This work is completed by me with Alexander's collaboration. First, let's take a look at the speech signal. It is continuous in time and can change dramatically during the whole sentence. However, the underlying phonetic content of speech signals changes smoothly across time. Thus, it is easier to learn the underlying phonetic content by a model. Our goal is to learn discrete speech representation which captures the phonetic information and perform phoneme recognition and speech synthesis according to the discrete speech representation. One way to achieve this is performing the following two steps. First, for each audio frame, we categorize it into a finite number of recognizable clusters according to how it sounds. We use different colors here to represent different clusters. Here, each cluster represents a phoneme and we call this phonetic clustering. Second, according to the clustering results, we further split the audio into smaller segments by merging frames which are from the same cluster. We call this temporal segmentation. We can use a single vector to represent a cluster because each audio segment is mapped to a cluster. A speech signal can be represented by a sequence of vectors, which we call this speech representation. Autoencoder is a model good at learning representations. A typical autoencoder has two components, an encoder and a decoder. Given an input audio, the encoder encodes each audio frame into a hidden vector. Afterwards, the decoder takes a sequence of such vectors and reconstructs the input audio. These hidden vectors surely contain some information about the audio, since the decoder reconstructs the audio with only information from these hidden vectors. However, there are two more things to do to achieve our goal. First, the encoded vector could be any real value vectors. This gives infinite number of choices of the such vectors. So, we need to limit the diversity of the encoded vector space to get finite number of recognizable clusters. And this could be done by phonetic clustering. Second, like we said, we want to represent an audio segment from the same cluster by a vector. However, the naive autoencoder turns each audio frame into a vector. To fix this, temporal segmentation needs to be performed. So, to make things clear, given an audio, the typical autoencoder encodes each audio frame into a hidden vector. The hidden vector has infinite choices and the sequence length of the hidden vectors will be the same as the input audio frames. If we apply the proposed phonetic clustering and temporal segmentation, the hidden vector will have finite choices, and the resulting hidden vectors will have roughly the same sequence length as the underlying phonetic sequence. Now, let's see how the proposed framework works. First, we maintain a codebook where each entry of it is a real value vector. We call an entry a code. These vectors are learnable. That is, it could be updated by gradient descent. Then, given an audio input, we first use an encoder to encode each audio frame into a hidden vector, like normal autoencoder. Then, for each hidden vector, we compute the distance between it and each code of the codebook. After this, we take the code with the smallest distance out by repeating this for each hidden vectors, we obtain the code sequence. Now, we have a code sequence of finite possible choices. We merge consecutive same codes, and we got a shorter code sequence, whose length is roughly equal to the length of the underlying funny sequence. This is the temporal segmentation. After this, we pass the shorter code sequence to a decoder. The decoder will try to reconstruct the input audio. Now, the problem is, how to make sure each code is corresponded to a phoneme. To map codes to phonemes, we do the following things. First, 
we make the size of the codebook equal to the number of phonemes. And we assign each code a phoneme. Second, for each hidden vector, we define the probability it belongs to a code as follows. We first compute the distance between the hidden vector and each code. Then, a submin operation is performed to convert distance into a probability distribution. The lower the distance, the higher the probability it gives. Third, we maximize the probability that the output code sequence being the true underlying phoneme sequence. And we call the minus of this probability recognition loss. Now, having this model, how do we recognize our synthesized speech? Let's first simplify the model a little bit. We use a block here to represent the phonetic clustering operation, and we remove the temporal segmentation illustration figure. So, let's see how to perform recognition. The recognition can be done as this. We encode the audio into some hidden vectors, and phonetic clustering is performed, which gives us a code sequence of finite choices. After this, temporal segmentation is performed to obtain the recognition result. This is the recognition process. How about synthesis? Given a phoneme sequence, we look up the codebook and the corresponding codes are selected. The selected code sequence are then passed to a decoder to synthesize the speech. This is the text-to-speech process. The model training includes three parts. The first part is the reconstruction part, which needs no label data. And we have a reconstruction that is just like normal autoencoder. In this part, the decoder learns how to reconstruct audio, given discrete representation selected according to the distance between encoder outputs and codes in the codebook. The encoder and the codebook are also updated to improve the reconstruction quality. The second part is the recognition part, and we have a recognition those mentioned earlier. To be more specific, we use CTC those here to maximize the likelihood of the model outputting true phoneme sequence. This part needs a small amount of label data to map codes to phonemes. The third part is the synthesis part, and we have a text-to-speech those. This part also needs a small amount of label data to make the decoder knows how to synthesize audio given discrete representation of true phoneme sequence. So, in total, there are three doses to train the proposed model, and only on label speech and few label speech with transcriptions are needed to train the model. Okay, so let's move on to the experiment section. The data set we use in this work is LG speech. It is an English dataset from a single female speaker. It has about 24 hours data, and we use about 22 hours data from it as the unlabeled data. A part of the remaining data I use as the label data. The encoder of our framework is composed of seven convolutional layers plus two LSTMs. The decoder is the Tegretron 2 model, which is a sequence to sequence model with the attention mechanism. The first experiment as representation analysis. In this part, we take a deep look on the representations of vowel phonemes. The left part is TSNE visualization of representations learned by our model. The right part is the IPA vowel chart defined by linguists. The x-axis of this chart means how close the tongue is to the front teeth, and the y-axis of this chart means how close the tongue is to the roof of the mouth. We can see that the closed vowels group at the upper left region of the TSA plot. In contrast, the open vowels locate at the lower right region. The representation visualization is parallel to the IPA vowel chart. This demonstrates the learned representations contain a certain degree of the phonetic information. Next, we show the phoneme recognition can benefit from shared representations. The baseline model is a normal CTC model having the same architecture as our encoder with an additional projection layer to predict probability of a phoneme set. The table shows the phoneme error rate on different amount of label data. We can see that our model beats the baseline model for any amount of label data. In our model, the speech-to-speech -speech reconstruction 
bridges the encoder and the decoder with shared representations. However, this is not the case for the baseline model. We suggest it is the shared representations that make our model outperform the baseline. For the text-to-speech experiment, we compare our model with Telegram 2 and SpeechChain. SpeechChain is a dual learning framework for speech recognition and text-to-speech where the two modules do not share representations. In the table, we show the model's MOS on different amount of label data. The higher the MOS, the higher the speech quality of the model output. The ground truth audio gives a very high MOS, which can be seen as an upper bound. With there are 20 minute label data available, our model outperforms other models. The Tecotron 2 model can hardly generate intelligible speech in this setting. This indicates the shared representation can also improve the speech synthesis. Finally, let's do a quick demo of our model trained with only 20 minute labeled data. For phoneme recognition, we pass an audio of the sentence, including a few of major importance to the model. The true phoneme sequence is as thus. And the model output is very similar to the true one. For the text-to-speech synthesis, we also pass the same sentence, including a few of major importance to the model. And the output of our model sounds like this. Including a few of major importance. For more details and demo audios, please refer to our paper and the demo page. Thank you for listening.